like, how do you get your guitar to make that screaming sound? Feedback. The bane of parents everywhere. Plain and simple, kid. It's physics. Huh? No, physics. You see, my vacuous friend, physics is the science of matter and energy and of the interreactions between them. In the case of my guitar, the almighty whack master, the energy ultimately transforms into sound waves of extreme volume and exquisite tone. Whoa, waves. Excellent. <laughs> If someone would have told me that all that leaping off the amplifiers, which was the dynamic entertainment yeah. G out of all time, yeah. but if someone would have said, hey, uh, Ted, there's this thing called a meniscus. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and what's happening, I go, Meni I, could, I never yeah. heard the word till I had my knees replaced. Really? I know it because I went to an American school, so they didn't teach the important yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which we need to get into here. Uh, we're wrong, oh, we're wrong. <laughs> but my point is, is that I have a lot of friends. Kurt Gibson is a hunting buddy of mine. Okay. He's the man in the arena, yes, yes. as are those NBA guys and those yeah. Red Wing yeah. hockey. They're superhumans. They're so dedicated to their passion. Males. And they really yeah. are. And they're, they're a, a, a constant reminder that, you know, I read some passages from, there's a warrior in us all. And one of the most important statements by one of the chief elders of one of the native tribes was that God gave you everything you need. Mm. And I think those super athletes um, are a reminder, at least they're supposed to be, unfortunately it's turned into entertainment and not inspiration. Yeah. All too often. Yeah. And so I see these guys with their <laughs> three pointers and Michael Jordan's flying through the air and going, God gave me everything I need and I'm going to use it. So I admire that, but I also have Mike Utley, a Detroit Lion hero, friend, great friend, great hunting buddy paralyzed for life because they it's like boxing okay Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali and Frazier and these guys they're they're yeah. ball, they're ballet ba yeah. ballerinas of, yeah. of physical spirituality samurai yeah uh, how do you not admire that but to beat the living <laughs> out of somebody for a prize yeah I you know, and I'm an aggressive guy. I don't know if you know this, but I'm really an aggressive guy. <laughs> I, I don't but I'm not going to beat the shit out of someone yeah. to attain the top beating out of shit. Some. Yeah. So I know you're here. You've climbed the mountaintop of Spirit Wild Ranch to consult with your elders. And <laughs> yes, I gotta thank you. I, and I'm spudging up all the wisdom today. I don't mean to turn this into a monologue, no, but I'm no, really good it. at it. No. <laughs> uh, because I'm 72 years clean and sober. Really? And when you're clean and sober and you realize you have a radar at an early age and when you turn it on you're rewarded with stimuli mm -hmm. information connections um dreams uh beyond the status quo uncharted territories especially as a bow hunter yeah because if you don't if you don't put your heart and soul into the mystical flight of the samurai spirit arrow you're buying chicken um yeah yeah, yeah. so so i i acknowledged all those stuff at, a, at an early age so as i continued with my journey to become chuck berry and howler wolf and little richard impossible um <laughs> I, I was able to observe people pursuing that excellence and and yeah, that yeah. statement by this is a book by uh, Stephen Hightower. It's called "A New Beginning: The Smoke of One Thousand Lodges." And to initiate our wonderful dialogue, because yeah, no, I, love, I love everything and everybody yeah. except evil and hate. Mm -hmm. I don't like evil and hate, and I think we all know what that looks like. Yeah, but you being here is special, even if you were just isolated you but of course you're not isolated you're, yeah. you're an accumulation of your life yeah and I can't tell you what your grandpa meant to me yeah he was a he was a man in the arena that these athletes could only fantasize about I mean your yeah. grandpa 
caught yeah. Wolverine's lie, yeah, yeah. hog tied him, yeah. and then flew him in the back of a super cup. Yeah. And I got to hang out with Ed Bilderback yeah. through the connection of the great Fred Bear. So I want you to know how moved I am. As you can tell, I'm easily moved <laughs> because I care yeah. and I pay attention. You're getting so soft. Having, you're getting soft in your in your years no, here I've now. No, I've been like this forever. <laughs> I'm like a, I'm like you know you look under look pussy under the dictionary. It'll either say dinner or Ted Nugent. All right, did you get that? <laughs> yeah, well, we got the yeah. Don't he, miss the jokes. The one liners. He's eh? really enjoying that. So so thank you no, for being here. I appreciate here. that. That's uh, you know it's so interesting when you're when you're growing up as a kid you don't realize. I didn't realize who Ed Bilderback no, really was. He was just my grandfather. No, he's not to, because he, he, he didn't attain a celebrity in a visible yeah, fashion. Yeah, yeah. But he was the super celebrity to conservation environmentalists before the terms were coined. Yeah, it was, it was, it was just bigger than life. And, yeah, and the stories that I heard from other people um, towards the end and after his passing was just like, oh, he's just like a wow. like someone from the wild, wild west. You hear these stories about these people. And like you're saying, the man in the arena, there's so many people, and I see it today, and, and we do a lot of stuff with kids, and it's everyone wants to talk and show this, this oh, I'm about this, but they aren't really about taking the action. They aren't truly in the arena. And I think that's kind of what you're saying about Captain Ed is that he just lived it and he stayed in the woods and he and he did yeah. all those things and he didn't necessarily have to go tell people about it. People knew because they saw it and they tried to keep up with him and he'd leave them in the dust. Yeah, but Ed he Bilderback, truly did it. Like he was living it every day, hunter, embodied it. Fisherman, trapper, definitive conservationist, the wise use of God's miraculous renewable resources as a valuable commodity in the asset column. And it's important to note how the abandonment of earthly stewardship accountability became they people abandoned it around I'm going to say when the beatniks were smoking too much dope and mm -hmm. the drool replaced <laughs> the the seeking of, of accurate information yeah it's comfortably numb it's actually uncomfortably dumb yeah <laughs> and so I witnessed this this one of the ugliest scourges of humankind that they would end hunting, fishing, and trapping because the beaver has rights. Yikes. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. so your grandpa, Ed Bilderback, and my hero, Fred Bear, my dad, my uncle John, my uncle Dick, my cousin, the Nugent family, everybody I know, the people that come to Spirit Wild Ranch, the people on the road that rock and roll, people everywhere I go at the feed mill, at the sushi bar, every, <laughs> hey, Uncle Ted, how's your venison coming this year? Yeah. yeah so yeah. <laughs> it remains a self evident physics of spirituality, nature, truth. But what your grandpa, Ed Bilderback, I, I mean, you should do a feature on him, and we will here for a moment. Yeah, that's He good. defined that rugged individual. He was Lewis N. Clark N. Sacagawea, yeah. with all due respect. He was uh, Grizzly Adams, the real one. And he, he was Jeremiah Johnson, Davy Crockett, and Daniel Boone. He was Crazy Horse. Yeah. He was sitting bull. Yeah. He was Cochise. I mean, yeah. I'm listing all the important names in life, yeah. and they've never made a three-pointer yeah. because they, <laughs> they identified that the earth produces life if you pursue it, manage it, and harvest it reverentially. And that's what Ed, Ed Bilderback lived before the scourge that attempted to stop that. And of course, I have to mention that those freaks, and I, I might be getting a little bit of a lisp here today because I, I shattered a tooth last night. Oh, no. So this will be very interesting. I'm okay, yeah, yeah. I'm denying yeah, it yeah, because yeah, yeah. I'm so excited about the subject matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're doing um, good. <laughs> so so uh, through my shattered teeth, Ed Bilderback stood for reverential use of, like the buffalo I killed a couple of days ago. It's food, yeah. clothing, lodging, yeah. medicine, tools, rope, glue, weapons, but more than that, spirit. Mm. And as those, I guess they were either, they were stoner slash scammers because the animal rights movement is all about paying their salaries and flying private to stop beaver trapping so that within a year and you don't responsibly trap the 
surplus beaver, all of a sudden your tax dollars pay some government goon to come in, come in and clean up after you by trapping the beaver. Maybe yeah, I should yeah. write a song called Can't Trap Beaver and yeah. da, da, da. I don't know. Standing uh, up for their rights. So, so, uh, so I live the life that Ed Bilderback and Sitting Bull and the pioneers that created the infrastructure and the system by knowing that God, that's why you see hieroglyphics on cave walls. We revered the beast, yeah, the antlered beast, the running beast. Where does our air, soil, and water quality come from? Wildlife habitat. Who has paid for that, reclaimed that, rehabilitated that, and safeguarded that forever? Hunters, fishermen, and trappers with the money to make sure that those precious wildlife resources aren't just slaughtered for the market, but rather in a sustained yield, scientifically based, eternal management. Jeez, I'm like Mother Teresa with a <laughs> bow and arrow here. Um, so I live this stuff and I just want everybody to know the name Ed Bilderback because uh -huh. he qualifies in that realm of those superhuman men in the arena. And, yeah, and no, I know yeah, you'll, yeah. You'll, you'll hear me here. The Arapaho, great Native Americans. Mm -hmm. If we wonder often, the gift of knowledge will come. That was way back then. I think that's called critical thinking. Yeah, yeah. If we wonder often, look out there and go. Yeah, try hmm, to figure it okay, out. Okay, in California, all right, we're saving the trees. They're all falling and dying. The lightning strikes and they all, the whole area burns. I wonder if we harvested the trees and gave out firewood permits that we wouldn't have eternal acres of kindling. And then when the lightning strikes, instead of burning down a yeah. thousand homes, Duh! Yeah. And I'm just yeah, a guitar yeah. player. Yeah. And I figured yeah. that out. Too so much common sense, maybe. I wonder often, yeah. how about yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we will be known forever by the tracks we leave, the Dakota. Hmm. That's, the, that's the mantra of the hunting culture. Make it better when you leave than when you got there. Yeah. So I could give you these, but I, it's, I love it's it. how no. you live. I think I will. I, um, the Ute, the great native tribe Ute, God gives us each a song. Mm. Well, now, you think that might resonate with me? Yeah. <laughs> but we, whether you're a musician or a, a singer or not, we all have something to project. Yeah, that, whatever that thing is. So, so these native peoples who were, whose very existence pivoted on the perfection, the perfection of hunting, fishing, and trapping, they understood the foundational values of respecting God's miracle, whoever, whatever your God might be. Yeah. But that we're all leaving tracks. Are you leaving a pile of plastic or are you cleaning up after yourself? So, I'm, again, I'm just a guitar player and I not only wrote <laughs> Wango Tango, I meant it. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I'm as crazy as they get. But you know what? I'm crazy tuned in. Yeah. And it, I like to share it's, that. It's, a, it's an interesting time. I, I feel like we've talked a lot uh, recently about like the internet is like this great thing, but then there's so much that comes with it that it allows people to, to congregate and, and share ideas, which is a beautiful thing. But there's all these other aspects that it's like, man, there's, it's, it's an interesting time to be alive for sure. Fascinating. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, um, reg well, I do have regrets because of the, I believe unprecedented, certainly in North America, unprecedented criminal corruption that yeah. were victimized by just treacherous yeah. bad guys in government. I mean, it's it's like every day there's footage of a guy committing a felony and yeah. violating his oath to the Constitution yeah. and people going, did you hear that? Yeah, um, and they don't get in trouble. And don't. And they don't get in and trouble. Don't, but buddies of mine will go to jail if they kill an extra deer yeah. while the government of that state kills thousands because you have to, but he didn't have the right paperwork. I'm, yeah. And I'm not yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm not forgiving a game law violation. But you, but my buddy got in more trouble for killing an extra deer in an area where the highway department wanted him to, the agriculture department wanted him to, the yeah. high, yeah. everybody yeah. wanted yeah. the insurance yeah. industry yeah. wanted him to kill that deer. And while he was going to court, the government killed thousands. But Hillary Clinton is not in jail yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and one and one equals pick a random number? I yeah. don't think so. The yeah. answer is two, whether you're comfortable with the number or not. Yeah. So these are trying times. But if you notice, even as I'm, 
articulating some very painful realities we're being dealt these days. I still have a shit and grit on my face because <laughs> I improvise, adapt, and overcome, and I can compartmentalize yeah. and optimize the quality of life in my family, neighborhood, ground that we own, wildlife that we that we are given to manage. We don't own them. We need to make sure we manage them for a healthy future for our grandchildren. So. Yes, I yeah. fight the enemies of uh, Marxism and the corruption, and I fight it every day in the media. Yeah, but yeah. then I take a deep breath and give Shemaine a big greasy kiss and and shoot a squirrel for my dog. So I'm yeah. gonna be okay. Yeah, I wonder. I wondered how uh, you balance that because you could you could consume you all all the time if you let it, and it's it's easy even as someone who's not super political like myself. But you get like oh fired up about one thing or another. But I, I feel like it is that getting back to the nature, getting back to using all parts of the buffalo, getting yes. back into being out in the wilderness and yes. honoring the ancestors yes. and what the Native Americans and the, and the beauty, there is so much wisdom in that and, and I love it. Um, and I think I want to uh, commend you. I feel like you and uh, Joe Rogan have done a great job on making people, I mean, I grew up, Ed Billerbeck's my grandpa, I didn't know how much good for the land, for nature, hunting does, you know, with sure. the populations, and like you're saying. Because we failed to promote it because we didn't think we had yeah, to. Yeah, it's yeah, venison, yeah. It's yeah, venison, yeah, it's yeah. food. Yeah. The animals are gonna have babies this spring and expand their numbers, but the habitat's not going to expand. In fact, the habitat's gonna be reduced. Yeah. How dare you subject these magnificent creatures to starvation and disease? And that, and people go, well, that won't happen. It didn't happen where I live. You live in L.A. Yeah. I mean, you've already killed all the animals. Yeah. Um, I have a song <laughs> called Spirit of the Buffalo. Mm -hmm. And if I can recall the lyrics outside of playing it. Um, <laughs> I will not go like the buffalo. Nobody can track me down. I'll make my stand like the buffalo, but I'll make my way to a higher ground. The people came from far away. They, they brought the will and the, they brought the plow and the will to stay. People came from far away, they brought the plow and the will to stay. Hmm. Um, the, the, the buffalo was obviously abused, but now we pray for a brand new day. What would you do for the buffalo? Sacrifice everything you own? Would you give, would you give up your life and security? Would you give them back their home? You're gonna claim that the wildlife needs habitat? You got this huge gated community? How about you start? Yeah. If you want more buffalo in your neighborhood, you go ahead and tear down your houses and make it a prairie again. And yeah. until that, shut the f up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and what would you do for the buffalo? And of course, well, we, we need to save the buffalo. Well, everywhere there is a buffalo right now, the native tribes, South Dakota, North Dakota, where the, Nevada, where there's free range buffalo, you have to harvest the surplus yeah. because they're going to have babies but they can't go there because there's a mall they yeah. can't go there because there's a, a crater they can't go there because your school and your parking lot and your theaters and your homes and your neighborhoods and your factories are there so and, and before we even paved the country the the habitat was already finite that's why the native americans we're able to utilize from prairie chickens to buffalo to deer and elk and antelope. And, and again, I re keep bringing up the wonderful name Ed Bilderback. <laughs> Ed Bilderback was praised by the great Fred Bear, who everyone thought was the greatest hunter. Fred Bear told me, he went, no, 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 no. Greatest hunter I've ever known was Ed Bilderback. Yeah. I saw that on, I saw uh, in yeah. it with Paul up and I showed these guys, uh, check this out. And, and it was yeah. some guy doing that, like, hey, what's, you know, like being the greatest hunter? And he's like, no, uh, there's a guy in Alaska, Ed Bilderback, and he's a better shot and a better hunter. Yep. And Mystical. I, yeah, I, I appreciate it. Um, I certainly wouldn't be here today and right, have the relationship right. that I do with your family if it wasn't for yep. for him. And I appreciate you being so good to, to our family over the years. and and uh, you know, paying some respect and take it, just taking well, an interest in I make in, connections. In him. Um, life is a series of connections. Um, did you, were you kind and generous and thoughtful and caring and fun? Or were you a prick? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just always suck. avoided the, being a prick. I mean, yeah. if I have to, I'm really good at it. But for the most part, I really care. So I, I make a lot of connections with people all around the world and I have so many great friends. I, I share so many wonderful family campfires. It, 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 Jesse, yeah. because of my big mouth, which is 
what God wanted me to have. He wanted <laughs> me to stand up for truth, logic, and common sense. Yeah. Especially in America, where it was the first experiment without tyrants and kings and emperors. Here's a, here's a little message for the tyrants and the kings and emperors. <laughs> Kiss my <laughs> Kiss my free <laughs> yeah. if you can access it, which you won't be able to, because I will knock you out. Anyhow. Um, that big How mouth did you lose the tooth again? Was it, was it just, <laughs> well, just that a... big mouth of mine is me experimenting in self-government. Yeah. Embracing, saluting, cultivating, and rewarding the good while identifying the bad and the ugly and fighting against it. What I'm getting to with my connections with people and the, the love affair I've had with your family and so many families, I can't tell you how many times I've been contacted over the years by the family in the most difficult time a family can experience, mm -hmm. where their little boy and little girl's dying. And their little boy and little girl's last request in life, I don't, I, 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 I get almost everything, but I don't get this. Their last request was to go hunting with Ted Nugent. Hmm. Six-year-old boy? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like he jammed a stranglehold. I mean, an in, 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 in angel, a seven-year-old little girl, over and over again. So every time I hear people level hate and anger towards me, I go, you know what? Little Macon Lynn, before he died, his parents wanted him to spend a campfire with me. Yeah. If, 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 how can, yeah. Hate can't penetrate that. Yeah, what's really going on? And I've on? done it so many times. So something about the big mouth celebrating good stuff is contagious and now more than ever welcomed. And my point about my love with your family and everybody, I'm, a, I'm, I'm just reek of love. I mean, like, I'm like, a, <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm like Gandhi. So, with it's machine annoying gun. at this point. Yeah. It's annoying. Yeah, yeah, it's so, so kind, I can hardly stand yeah, myself. Yeah, it's but, too much. I gotta tone it down. But the point is, is that when you have that powerful of an indicator, or the Navy SEALs who request my song, Fred Bear. Yeah when their flag-draped coffin comes home. Yeah. Uh, Chris Campbell died trying to rescue my buddy Marcus Luttrell, and his last request yeah. was for me to play Fred Bear at his memorial. How, do mm. I, how in God's name did I ever deserve that? Yeah. Um, the point is, is that they decided I did. I'll take it. I yeah. mean, I, I got a bunch of purple hearts around here. I didn't earn them. Yeah. But the guys who gave them to me forced him into my hand and said, I want you to have this because you fight for the freedoms my buddies died for. Yeah, amazing. So, so if, if a goofy guitar player can connect with people that deeply, nobody has an excuse not to. Now, everybody doesn't have to. Yeah. And nobody's putting pressure on anybody to do anything. But boy, you're born here and you're gonna die over here. What are you doing to make that yeah. stretch out? Are you Between. doing dumb stuff so Really? Drugs? Alcohol? Tobacco? Really? Stupid food? Really? Garbage? So what, we want A and B to be really close together? No, no. A, I'm born. B, I'm going to die. I might get cancer. I might get heart disease. But if I take good care of myself, I might live a long time. And I plan on it. Yeah. And so what are you doing? Were you kind today or were you a prick? If somebody decided to wanted to do something that you didn't want to do, did you go, okay, let's do that? Or did you go, well, I want to do this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So as an old man, it's, it's simple stuff like that. And again, I'm bringing up the name Ed Bilderback. That's how he lived. That's yeah. how your mom lived. Yeah. That's how my family lives. And that's how... Every day to the fullest. Yeah. Stretching that out. Yeah, stretch. There's, hey, I'm a, over here somewhere. But boy, in the meantime, I'm kicking some... Yeah. Baby. I'm yeah, rocking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's that, pretty simple. Here's the story that I heard. Um, you went to... Uh, Pettick Island to shoot something with with Captain Ed, yes, with mm -hmm. my grandpa there, and uh, he's just a he's just that old time like he's an ornery sob. Mm -hmm. He talk he'll talk some shit and and <laughs> he'd tell me inappropriate jokes. My mom would find out like that was just him. <laughs> so you guys are up there and I'm off in college in San Diego and all I'm my whole world is like basketball. I'm oh, just sure, honed in on that. Sure. And and your son Rocco, Rocco was all into honed in basketball. Mm -hmm. And the story that I heard when I was off at college was. 
you were talking about sending him to a, a school where he could play with some real players yep. out here. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then my grandpa goes, well, my grandson would kick your son's <laughs> ass in basketball. I'm like, of course he said that. And he doesn't even, like he knows like I'm decent and, and he's been to games, right. but he doesn't, he's, he's a hunter, you know? And so this was the funny story that I heard. And then fast forward five years, I'm out playing basketball in LA and someone's like, hey, that's uh, Rocco Nugent. And uh, I'm like, okay. And I'm like, I wonder if he would know my grandpa. So I went up to him wow. and I, and I, and it's so funny knowing Rocco so well now, it's like, it makes sense. But like I said, hey, do you happen to know uh, the name Ed Bilderback? That's my grandfather. And he goes, Whew. and he like, he's literally, he goes like this and he because goes. Because it's such a specific, yes. yes he's, like goosebumps. Goosebumps. he's like goosebumps. He's like, I have goosebumps. He goes, your grandfather was one of the most influential people yes. in my dad's life. Yes. And that's when we became friends awesome. and, and, and all the things that's happened. that, that's that tribal, loving humanity that if that's how you surround yourself, you're gonna to go to bed at night pretty fulfilled. The relationships, right? Yes, yeah. it's about how many people did you touch and how many people did you make smile Yeah. in various ways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, positive spirit, positive energy begets, rewards, encourages, and stimulates more positive spirit and more positive positive energy. And I think when you, you reference the internet and how, uh, boy, I take care of my business. I write articles for a dozen magazines and I do yeah. interviews all the time. Yeah. And I always make sure they send them to me because they edit out all my good answers. <laughs> and then they yeah. manipulate them to make it make yeah. me say something I didn't actually say. Yeah. I've actually, well, I could tell you some stories. Well, I feel like that's how you know you're doing something right. Because no matter what you do, on a smaller level or a larger level, if you're doing something, people want to attack you. And so like the more people that you have yeah. coming after you, it's like, oh, I'm must be doing something right. Especially You're changing today. all my words and all these things. Yes. Let's film it and make sure we uh, edit this out and make him look super bad yes. here. Yes. But but no, I, it's a it's a, it's a it's a culture war. Yeah. And I experienced the culture war that maintains the the pulse that our interview has maintained so far, referencing Native Americans, your great your wonderful grandfather, and the hunting, fishing, conservation lifestyle. Um, I started getting attacked in the 1960s because these disc jockeys, man, they're all stoned and you know, wow, I can't believe those guitar licks. Where do you get all this energy? So I go, well, I spent the weekend with my dad bow hunting up in northern Michigan. I go, what's that? Yeah, I yeah. Go, Hunt, hunting like the Native Americans with the bow and arrow. I go, wow, man, you like, you like murder deer and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. What is <laughs> yeah, murder. What is that? Yeah. How do people survive for <laughs> hundreds of thousands murder? of years? Murder? I mean, have you ever talked to a family whose family member was murdered? Yeah. And you're going to relate me getting pure, natural, organic meat from the earth as the same thing as the vicious, violent, criminal taking of a human life? Wow. You, you, yeah. They the might way, be offended have, by that. Yeah. yeah they might be offended by so, that. So, so even though I was a, a mushy brain young man, I was a teenager, I knew that the mystical flight of the arrow was, I didn't know it then, but I knew instinctively that if you put your heart and soul into this, boom, it's like the origins of Zen and Samurai, that that's not an arrow you're shooting. Yeah. That's the path of your life that you and you alone can control if you put your spirit into it. Hmm. And this guy's claiming I'm murdering stuff? So, of course, all those people always had spittle in the corner of their mouths yeah. because, once again, comfortably numb is actually uncomfortably really dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, even though I was not a, a trained debater, and I'm sure you've witnessed some of my so-called debates, which none of them really qualify, just crush <laughs> skulls with yeah. truth, logic, and common sense. And so like I was the, able I like to... like the Pierce Morgan. I was, yes, yeah, I was able to dance on their stupid um, and scrape you know, bloody remnants of stupid out of the cleats of my dancing shoes um, of people who tried to tell me that venison isn't food and that conservation isn't the wise use and that your leather jacket wasn't killed. Yeah. <laughs> and that your the grapes for your wine wasn't protected by a vineyard operator that killed everything yeah. messing with your grapevines. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm yeah, sure yeah. you saw the Joe Rogan interview. Yep. I mean, when I explained that to people, it was like I could hear the, the global neck turning going, yeah, yeah. going I, I didn't know that. So, of course you didn't know that because 
you don't know why you turn this faucet and cold water comes out and this one hot water comes out and your thermostat it gets warmer or colder and you start your car and it goes and there's pavement everywhere so you can get from point A. Of course you don't know that because it was already laid out for you. You didn't have to do none of it. Yeah. Um, so we've really become spoiled and it goes back to your internet reference oh, yeah, that yeah. I use it for productivity, positive communication, truth, logic, and common sense, sharing and pounding. And also, it's also a manifestation of the cultural deprivation that so many people focus on the negative. You know, you, I kill a deer and I have a million responses. Oh, congratulations, yeah, that's yeah. tough. You must have really worked hard. That's great. I, I wish I had some backstops. Yeah. Incredible. One, yeah, then one person will come in after a million and go, you're a, you're a coward for murdering Bambi. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Which, and your brain this, focuses at least mine will focus on that one negative well, one. Well, I, I get a kick out of it. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's literally a lunatic fringe, both literally and figuratively. <laughs> but the lunatic fringe is well represented in the media, yeah. academia, yeah. all across Hollywood, and horrifically in our government right now. It's a lunatic fringe where the Speaker of the House on television can commit a felony ripping up your and my State of the Union address. That's not hers. Yeah, yeah. It's ours. Yeah, yeah. It's a federal document yeah. of serious importance. Right at the end, right? On TV yeah, with that. a nasty sneer like she's on a Saturday yeah. Night Live skit, how to be the ultimate <laughs> So it's example after example after example. So the positive is live and well, but it's dangerously underrepresented yeah. in those institutions that I just mentioned. Yeah. But on the not so mean streets of this co country, Jesse, which I have a great relationship with and I wander constantly, mm. um, people still work hard. People still believe in God, family, country. They believe in making sacrifices and taking risks so they're in the asset column. Mm -hmm. And if you take out a loan to go to college and instead of paying off the loan, you're buying tattoos and piercings and drugs and alcohol and tobacco and aftershave and bling bling and going to the dry cleaners, none of which, by the way, those things I just mentioned, you know how much money I've spent on those things in my lifetime? <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> no dry cleaning ever. Yeah. No aftershave ever. Yeah. No bling bling ever. Yeah. No tobacco, no drugs, no tattoos, no piercings, no liquor, enough ever, zero. Yeah. That's why I have land. Yeah. Yeah. I have land instead of shit. Um, yeah. Point is, is that a person will take out a student loan instead of paying off their debt by living within their means. They have no idea what that means. They expect a person who went, you know, I'd like to go to college, but I don't think I can afford that. And I can't afford that pickup, so I won't buy it. Not, I'm going to buy that pickup and, you know, I can't make the payments. You pay it. I'm supposed to get free college. You pay. The you, government's supposed to take care of I can't make these payments. Me. You guys pay me. It's, it's unbelievable that, that, that someone is actually going, you know, these poor college kids, they should have their debt r relieved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about mine? Yeah, personal well, decisions. Yeah. So, so, so we ha we're living in a, a, in a, I don't know how you edit these and how PG-13 yeah. you want to be, but there's only one word to describe this, and that's royal cluster. Yeah, um, yeah. That probably won't it, make it, but no, I like it. No, it you're good, you're good. It's just like planet of the cuckoo's nest out there. Where truth, logic, and common sense, I think it's illegal in California, yeah. New York, yeah, we can't New have Jersey, Maryland, there. Illinois. I mean, everyone's leaving. Yeah. I, all the good people, I hope. Yeah. Um, so, so again, there's plenty of negative. Here, I'll summarize it. Really <laughs> Make it because it sounds like we're talking about to take an ownership for your life, which is a big thing. Yes. With we share with kids because everyone today wants to be a victim. Everyone, but the thing no. is, we all go through different the things. Life you could, ain't fair. Yeah. Write it down. Yeah. Life ain't fair. Watch Old Yeller <laughs> immediately. Get <Yeah>. the movie <laughs> Old Yeller. Yeller. Old Yeller is gonna make a big resurgence. I think. Watch we could, we could Old push. Yeller. Yeah. Make your children watch Old Yeller. Good dog. Hugs and biscuit, foaming at the mouth, dog. Bullet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's uncomfortable and heart breaks your heart. Yeah, but it's real. But the real world. Good, good, love. Bad, out. And well, who's to make that decision? I can. Yeah, I'll make. I my can. Decision. Yeah. Loving family, good. Rapist, bad. I yeah, mean, it's, well, yeah. it's not black and white. It's black and white. Yeah. It's, Here's good, 
Here's bad. So I know you got a hunt here in a little bit. You got some stuff going on. I wanted to ask you a little bit about the music because there's mm -hmm. so many people that. By the way, the music <laughs> yeah, yeah. is the sonic <laughs> bombast of all this. When yeah, I yeah, play yeah. these things, in fact, I'd love to so, play one for you. Here. I got songs and, and, and patterns and jam sessions that at the age of 72, are more ferocious than I was when I was a horny teenager at 12. I was probably already a teenager at 12. Um, in Detroit <laughs> with my first loud Take app. Early. So I'm lucky that I have that passion. Yeah. So the music, that my last record was titled The Music Made Me Do It because Jesse, the music really does make me do it. Yeah, Thank God I have my music because I could have hurt somebody by now yeah. if I didn't take it out on my guitar. Yeah. Did I tell you about my first concert? Mm -mm. Of mine? My first concert of any concerts of ever, con of any concert, the Hollywood Bowl or the Greek—I can't remember—but you, you were shooting bow, of you were shooting bow and arrow. You were lighting up. We were uh, dancing were around. Were you the moved? Other. It was Hollywood. Jesus was there. Yes. He walked around in a row. It was—I was like, "Is this what I've been missing?" Yes, like, is this, it this is what, what you've been and, missing. And people, and the, even more fun for me than the music is your banter in between the songs. I'm fun. I'm yeah, a fun <laughs> it's a, it was a good time. So, so like I know, like even in my own life. Um, I wanted to start speaking and connecting with kids and you start and you're just doing it because you love it and you got that passion, right? Yes. And, and it's contagious. And too. you're just and you're just showing up and you're not making any money. You're 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 okay, but you're getting better. Yeah. And you have to work hard for a long time. And then all of a sudden, hey, they start paying you money and, yeah. and you start uh, it becomes a career and you're able to uh, grow it. So for you with the music at what point was it just passion and love? Because I know like you want to, if I'm, tell me if I'm correct, you won a contest and that kind of um, helped propel things. Well, but at what point did it go from like, I love this and um, I see that I have some talent to, wow, I really got something here to, so, oh, hey, I'm this is a, a life now. My, I was born in 1948. Okay. This was, and I was born in Detroit in 1948. This was after we, the American GI pulled out a super warrior because they, they were the only military that had real freedom to come home to. They had life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. It was written down for the first time in history. Yeah. So we crushed the Japs and the Nazis. And if people are offended by the word Japs, maybe you should share a campfire with the guy that was at the Bataan Death March like I did. Hmm. They tortured people. Certainly you're aware of the rape of Nanking and if not, read it. Okay, I'm on it. The Japs and the Nazis were the devils, as evil as evil could possibly be. Hmm. The GIs beat them because they saw that they were evil and they were destroying human life and we, we crushed them. Hmm. So I was born in that <laughs> celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born where we knew we did good and we made unbelievable sacrifices to crush Glaring evil and the whole world looked at America like, thank you. Everybody said thank you, except the Japs. And, well, even the Japs and the Nazis eventually said thank you because they were bamboozled and they were slaves of Hitler and the emperor. Emperor? Anyhow. <laughs> so my point is, is that when I was born in 48, what else was exploding besides universal admiration for work ethic mm -hmm. in Detroit? epitomized yeah. work ethic, productivity, pride of accomplishment. If, if the whole world I was born in was the man in the arena. Yeah. You give the world the best you got and sometimes you get kicked in the teeth. You give the world the best you got anyway. So my dad, who was a, <laughs> this is also fascinating. My dad, who was a, a US Army cavalry drill sergeant never stopped being a U.S. Okay. Army cavalry drill okay, sergeant. Okay, so I'm gonna grow my hair out and play the guitar. I'm sure he loved well, that. No, that. You would think that that was a natural revol revolution gesture on my part, but it wasn't. Hmm. Because my dad actually helped me get my first guitar. And he wow. didn't like Elvis. He sure didn't like Little Richard and, and Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley. Some real talent. And so that was such an outrageous defiance and electronic celebration of irreverence and long tall Sally sure like the ball tootie fruity all Rudy get the <laughs> Lawrence Welk I don't think so man um, and all the crooners so it 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 created a whirlwind in us that were born at that time yeah and yeah. so when I heard this is before the Beatles of the Stones, who took all the Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley and Motown. I'm born in Motown. 
So this musical authority was everywhere. And I wanted to play the guitar. My dad made me practice, and he made me cut the lawn and shovel the snow and wash the windows and wash the car and paint the fence. I sold night crawlers. I delivered the newspaper. I went trash picking every Thursday. If I found something that I could clean up and sell a hammer, I found a broken hammer, but I cleaned up. I might sell it for a buck. Hmm. Hello? Work ethic, yeah. cause and effect. You want something? Earn it. Because if you don't earn it, you'll probably throw it away, all you half-drank bottles of water by little brats. <laughs> I could go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, Am yeah. I striking some chords here? <laughs> so, so no, yeah. It, it, you know, there was a defiance factor because my dad didn't like the boogie-woogie uh, rock and roll stuff. Yeah. But God bless him. He said, if you're going to play guitar, you're going to practice 30 minutes every day of your life. Yeah, if you're going to do it, you're going to be Thank you, taking Dad. it seriously. So I practiced, and because we practiced, and James Brown was such a force, and so was the Motown Funk Brothers, and so was Chuck and Bo and Little Richard. There was a work ethic there. Those guys worked their ass off. And so we were all moved by it. I think if you see interviews by everybody from Billy Joel to Steven Tyler, and I don't care who, they'll reference Chuck Berry and Ed Sullivan in 53, who conveyed an outrageous, irreverent image of that music that Chuck and Bo and Little Richard brought forth from the black blues guys. So there was a real emotion there, because they're yeah. very emotional. The gospel, they're praying Jesus to set us free. And then when he did get set free, they're thanking Jesus for setting us free. Look out, here yeah. we come. <laughs> and what a great attitude, look out, here we come. So I put my heart and soul into this music that I was surrounded by just incredible musicians. Are you are you kidding me? For 60 some years I've been surrounded by the greatest gifted, hardworking musicians that a guitar player could fantasize about. Hmm. And that they've always been there for me. So because we tried harder than the other bands, because we were clean and sober, I'm not so sure about a couple of the guys, <laughs> but I was clean <laughs> and sober. Wobbly. I was clean and sober because my dad would have ripped my head clean off. So was that, that your dad instilled that? Oh, very much so, yeah. yeah. I was always but, just scared to do it, and then I got to an age where I was like, it's not anything I have any desire to do. Well, I, if anybody should have rebelled against that authority, it should have been me, because I didn't like A lot of times, discipline. yeah, people do that, right? However, when I saw musicians who would make this great music, grinding tight rhythms like James Brown or Wilson Pickett, and then they'd get high and they'd get stupid. Clean and sober, tight, high, Stupid. So I mm. had a pragmatic um, indicator that my dad was right. Yeah, and you I, were serious about what you were doing. And, and I, why was, would I take wanted a chance to make the music powerful. It. Yeah. Um, and tight and sexy. And, and if you're going to play, it should be a driving force. Uh, I, 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 hello. So <laughs> the music equal to my bow and arrow. So stop and think of the extremes. Outrageous, I'm playing louder than hell, cranking like an animal. You ain't playing outrageous, noisy, rock and roll outrage. And then, whoo, sneaking along the Rouge River with my bow and arrow, how do I get close to that squirrel? Smart step, reward, of closing the distance. Fumbling step, punishment by alerting the animals not getting close. It It's such an outrageous juxtaposition of stealthy, silent, predator stealth yeah. versus just, just drive you nuts yeah. with these <laughs> grinding rhythms. I think that's the thing keeping you it's the same. So, so the internet am, stuff, it's like, I'm going to go out in that tree stand, yes. and it's going to be peace. The The animals don't know my music. They don't yes. know who I am. Yeah, they're I'm not going to walk in front of me and turn broadside because I sold 40 million albums. Yeah. I'm going to have to earn this shot, and I'm going to have yeah. to practice and make this shot. So when I come in, that's why this man's cuckoo's nest. Most guys have a man cave. This is a man's, this man's cuckoo's, cuckoo's nest. nest. Okay. Um, Fred, I, that's Fred Bear right there, right? That's Fred. See? Yes, I, absolutely. Yeah, I recognize him. And I have uh, pictures with your grandpa, too. And uh, so I come in after having a total primal... Cochise day, I pick up that guitar and fire erupts. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it's like yeah. an uninhibited, mushy brained, carefree, instinctual, sexual animal that makes music to breed to. Um, 
I don't know how else to explain it. That's a pretty, that's pretty good explanation. <laughs> yeah, really right there. Um, see you. Drive safely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so I'm lucky that I have this, the cleansing. And I know so many of my so-called peers, which I, I don't have any peer pressure. I have no peers and nobody yeah. can pressure me. Yeah. <laughs> but so many of my musical heroes are dead because they couldn't get away from it. Because the music, it, you know how you get a song in your head and you go, I can't get it out of my head. Can you imagine if you lived the music mm. and if you created that song and you love that lick, it's hard to get out. And so they went to drugs and alcohol to get out and it, it, they died because yeah. they didn't have a bow and arrow. And a lot of people, well, that's awful si oversimplistic. I don't think so. Yeah. I think simplistic is the answer to complication. Yeah. And that's that samurai guy. I think in the movie Last Samurai, trying to teach uh, Tom, uh, what's his name, how to... Uh, is that the Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise, yeah, yeah. To do the samurai sword, which is, again, it's a, it's a spiritual ballet. You don't wield the sword. You envision the path of the sword. You don't shoot an arrow. You are the path of the arrow, and the arrow fills the space that you demanded through mm. effort. Well, when you do that to the guitar, yeah. killer licks happen. Man. <laughs> and I, I mean, I, I come in here, I got new songs. You don't songs. enjoy it at all. You, don't, you aren't passionate at all, Ted. No, I, I <laughs> can't wait to, every gig is the most important gig. I've done 6,751. Last one was uh, August 31, 2019 with Greg and Jason, the world's greatest rhythm section. And you're not jumping off the no. So I that, can't one, jump. that one, that uh, one, because I, I saw jump. it before. Uh, I don't. It was like stadiums, uh, and you're, and then the knees have have uh, been an issue from. I jumping. hope. How high were those speakers? Is what I want to know. They well, looked so I, high. I, I, for since like '65, 1965, with the Amboy Dukes, I would just. I was so athletic. I was like Bruce Lee. <laughs> I was just nothing but muscle and sinew and. Fearlessness. I'd, the amps weren't set up to climb on, but I'd leap up on the drum riser. I'd leap up on the amps and, and yeah, yeah, I'd leap off the amps. Bam! Every song. Yeah, yeah, it looked awesome. Fun yeah. to watch. Fun to watch. I Don't hope want everybody it, uh, enjoyed that yeah, yeah, yeah. because I've had both of my knees replaced <laughs> and it hurt like a son of a. B um, but, and if I had to do it over again, a lot of people go, Do you have any regrets? And I always go, No, I've had a great life. But you know what? I do regret abusing my body with those leaps but I, I, the music's intoxicating yeah it it's out of body yeah it when so you powerful. play music with everything you've got you're gone it's like a bow and arrow when i get my bow and arrow the world's gone by the time i grab it yeah and right about here Nancy Pelosi was never born. <laughs> Jeez. There's no ugliness. <laughs> Hillary Clinton never existed. And same so with the, the music. music. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And same with the music. <laughs> uh, it's it. If you're gonna yeah. do it all the way, I use the term samurai a lot. Okay. And the samurai is about deep into the spiritual inner life that is impossible to define except by the individual in action. And when I have this action, especially stocking up on dinner, it's very difficult. It's almost impossible. <laughs> at, God made animals to get away from guitar players with sharp sticks. Um, <laughs> and it's very challenging. When you finally accomplish it, and you can get here on an animal that doesn't want you to get, and you can send that arrow and kill him cleanly and responsibly, it's, it's yeah. out of body. Same with the guitar. When I play these licks, it's like, the whole the world's gone. Uh, it's, it's a dangerous condition. It's, it's a magical moment where I'm both completely tuned out, but if I had to protect Shemaine, I could immediately transition. Yeah, yeah. Um, or if there was a dangerous condition, even though I'm intoxicated by the music, I could immediately go, oh, I gotta catch this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. actually on stage, yeah. I've been jamming, and somebody will throw something up, and I go, bam, and I'll catch these things. That was awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because you're both gone, yeah. but it's close Focusing. to omniscience. Yeah. Which again, your grandpa, Ed Samurai. Bilderbeck. Ed Bilderbeck like had that. never shot a bow, maybe at camp when he was a little boy, but when he met Fred Bear, and your, your grandpa, Ed, was a right-handed guy, Fred shot left-handed. Fred said, Fred's at the camp, 
together one time around the fire. He said, I had Ed Builder back. I've been shooting my bow all my life. I won all these championships. I had to practice. I constantly fumbled and learned how to shoot the bow. And Ed grabbed my bow, and within two arrows, he was out shooting me. Jeez. <laughs> Wait, Unbelievable. Just, I believe it. Yes, unbelievable. That's a that's a uh, uh, that's an an inner goal that I'm sure Michael Jordan did or uh, Tiger Woods probably did it. Yeah. Um, some of these guys. Yeah. Um, uh, accomplish that. I think a great welder is more important than a great guitar player. Yeah. I think when you got a weld that people go, have you seen Jimmy's weld? You know, <laughs> the yeah, best yeah. welder. I'm going to hire Jimmy. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. That's, Do it something that's that matters. a samurai moment, I think, too. Yeah. A good teacher yeah. who can see a child in need and work with that. Like my daughter, my daughter Louisa mm -hmm. was a teacher of the year here in Texas a couple years ago. No way. Because she she, she p pursues omniscience. We'll never achieve it. But we can get cl we can get damn close. Yeah. Um, there's been moments where I've caught things on stage where I completely <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah just popped out gone with the guitar solo and I see this thing come up like bam I catch it. That's a great moment though. That, 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 that makes I you go, look oh, like a boss. Was, I got look at that goosebumps. Just remember <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Save your own skin. So on that you one. can be. See, that's why I, I just can't understand why someone would pursue comfortably numb. Uh, tune out and tune tune out and drop out. Yeah. Tune it. Really? And and if your family needed you, you wouldn't be there? And if an, a, an occurrence took place that you were needed, you'd rather drop out and be a liability instead of an asset? I just don't. Yeah. You can get completely completely intoxicated, stoned beyond any chemical indulgence with sex, I think a killer meal. I mean, when oh, I yeah, eat some yeah. of this food, I go, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, so yeah. Delicious. yeah. God, is that delicious. <laughs> I get my eyes roll back. But it, no, I'm easily way. stimulated, no, obviously. What a gift that is. Is this, is this a samurai? This is kind of a samurai I don't know vibe what that is. I'm thinking they're saying samurai. It's, it's an inconsequential See, I got, moment. I, got, I know we have to get you out on that tree no, stand. No, we're good. We're good. I mean, I got, whatever I got, you want to do. I'm though. just glad you're here. I'm, I, no, this, this is, is catching up. We've been catching up this. is wonderful. Are you a Bruno Mars fan? I have it on good authority. Do you like Bruno Mars music? I love I love all that James Brown, okay. uh, uh, Michael Jackson, orchestrational Motown uh, uh, musical authority, and I love you know he's got the dance thing oh, down. He's got Just it. Monster. He's got. I love this guy. But see, a guy who was raised on James Brown, and be sure you look for the Tammy Show. Okay. T A M M I. It was a, a music festival in '62ish, where it was James Brown and the Stones. And watch James Brown. <sighs> Samurai doesn't even describe it. What he does, how he dances, yeah. and ah, it's gonna be all right. Yeah, yeah. Screaming it's across the town of this world. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I got goosebumps on Goody. And watch James Brown at the Tammy show, T A M M I, and go, ah, what species is this? Yeah. So that's what Bruno. That's where Bruno Mars got that. He's even stated that. Yeah, that's where Michael yeah. Jackson got that. Mm. Um, that's where almost everybody, at least, pursues those. Bit on his style. Those are the only guys I can think that actually got it. Yeah, yeah. Bruno Mars, Michael Jackson. Is that it? That's it. So hmm. research the Tammy yeah, show by check James it Brown. It's on the and, list. Making it happen. And then, yeah, <laughs> we'll be dancing. Yeah, we'll be dancing all night. Monstrosity musical um, uh, uh, physics of spirituality, out of body miracle stuff. It's, it, it, but that's how we were raised. Yeah. Um, and when I watch Bruno Mars, they all do the moves together. Boom! Oh yeah. <laughs> the whole band. The whole band. <laughs> I'm going him. Yeah, that's how yeah. me and my, I got goosebumps. Yeah. That's how me and my band approach songs, and that's how we play. So I know where he got that, and to see a young guy do that, and the whole band tuned in that good. Yeah, he's, he, I'd say, that I can't think anybody that is more impacting musically for me in many, many years. Prince, on occasion, mm. I didn't like his sappy stuff, 
but I liked his um, soulful stuff, okay. and snappy stuff. I like snappy music and, and pile driving stuff. Yeah. Um, I can't think of many others. I love ACDC at their peak, but that's they're a little Caucasian in that realm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, love yeah. the Caucasians, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah. very rarely does a, a white artist really understand that inner grind. Yeah, the, the, Aerosmith like the soul. has done it, like Sammy Hagar has done it, Van Halen did it. Um, the Stones, at their, you know, <laughs> the Stones and the Beatles and the Who and uh, the, the Kinks and the Yardbirds. Zeppelin had its moments, um, but none of those great rock bands have delivered a moment quite like Bruno Mars's top moments. I mean, the yeah, guy's an yeah. animal. I love animals. So good. He's an animal. Well, let's wrap this up, but I got one final thing for you. Mm -hmm. First, I just want to acknowledge you again. Thank you for uh, having us here. Sure, and, and yeah. For you how feel you've treated home, my, don't you? Yeah, treating Special. my family so good over the years and, and honoring my grandfather. And, and uh, you know, as you're, as you're talking about this stuff, it's kind of like so many of like the modern uh, like gurus that talk about gratitude and and manifest uh, you know manifesting everything, but also just being um, uh, what is it, like yoga meditating. Yeah. For me, as you're talking about stuff, like you're there's not a person more grateful for nature, for music, and uh, and you, th that is your meditation. Being out there, be, yes. being in your music, being that thing, being sober, and I just think that it's so cool that you've been able to embody that. And live it, and uh, just for being a force in the world, I just, I just well, love you. it. And well, I would like to say thank you because I know that you're focusing on children who need direction. And that's People. what I want. I want you. Normally, the question I'd ask yes. at the end would be, if you're going to go back to a young Ted Nugent, what would be the advice you give yourself? But I really, plan on it later but, today. But, but, what I, but what I'm really asking is, what would you tell these like young people today, this next generation? Like, and I'll let you rant, and I'll just shut up because I know you got something. I, but you've already been hitting it, the hard work and ownership, and 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 staying clear vision. Um, I, it hits with all the stuff that I truly believe and I've seen. Um, and yeah, if there's anything like that, if you were going to go back and talk to a younger version of you, or just uh, you know. Kids out there today. Well, what would share, be your thing? Share my lifetime experience with everybody, but especially young people. And like I referenced, those families that somehow thought I qualified to be in their inner circles. They say goodbye to their young sons and daughters. I don't know of any other test that we could be put to that would qualify us as being okay, at least, or meaningful to those moments, special moments. But that's why I started my Ted Nugent Camp for Kids 32 years ago. And it's because I've, I communicate, I'm so open, I'm, I'm approachable, I, I'm aggressive, I'm a gregarious, and people know that I've been a, a lone wolf in the stoner world of rock and roll, say, no, 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 your, your, your ultimate happiness can only be achieved clean and sober. Keith Richards notwithstanding. <laughs> and it, I love that guy. <laughs> but he kind of blows my entire theory out of the water. Yeah. Because yeah. he's going to board here and he's going to use Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like Skin chemical some warfare. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love Keith Richards. An outlier. And, There's some outlier everywhere. And I love, I love my stoner friends. I love everybody, which is why I share the message. So the Ted Nugent Camp for Kids Battle Cry is that happiness is ultimately achieved clean and sober, where God gave us everything we need. Use it. You doesn't need alcohol or, or tobacco or drugs to stimulate it. it, it you have it all. Mm -hmm.